Ever wondered what really happened during the making of those iconic movies? Curious about the secrets that the silver screen tried to keep hidden? Well, you're in for a treat because we're about to spill the beans on Hollywood's best-kept secrets. Welcome, movie enthusiasts, to a cinematic journey like no other. Today, we're diving deep into the heart of Hollywood, unlocking the vaults of some of your favorite films to reveal the untold stories that unfolded behind the camera. But here's the twist. After each jaw-dropping clip, I'm going to challenge you to guess the movie. And in the next shot, I'll reveal the name, along with the behind-the-scenes scoop. Get ready to be entertained, surprised, and most importantly, let in on the secrets that only true movie aficionados know. So grab your popcorn, settle in, and let's embark on this adventure into the heart of Hollywood's hidden narratives. Hubba hubba hubba. During the filming of Payback, Mel Gibson accidentally punched out Greg Kinnear's tooth during a scene in which their characters are fighting. The incident happened so quickly that no one realized what had happened until after the scene was over. Kinnear tried to play it off, but he was clearly in a lot of pain. Gibson was mortified and apologized profusely. The incident made headlines around the world, and it even led to calls for Gibson to be fired from the film. However, director Brian Helgeland stood by Gibson, and the film was eventually released on time. Kinnear also forgave Gibson, and the two actors have remained friends ever since. In the years since the incident, Gibson has spoken openly about his regret for what happened. He has said that he was so focused on the scene that he didn't realize how hard he had punched Kinnear. He has also said that the incident taught him a valuable lesson about the importance of safety on set. One of the most infamous behind-the-scenes stories in Hollywood history. It is a reminder that even the most experienced actors can make mistakes, and that safety is always paramount on set. Sharon Stone and Sylvester Stallone have both spoken about how passionate and intense their love scene in The Specialist was to film. Stone said that the scene was very real and that she felt very vulnerable during filming. Stallone said that the scene was one of the most sensual things I've ever done on film. The love scene in The Specialist is particularly sensual because of the way in which Stone and Stallone interact with each other. There is a lot of physical chemistry between the two actors, and they both seem to be deeply attracted to each other. The scene is also very well shot and edited, which heightens the sensuality. The love scene in The Specialist is considered to be one of the most iconic love scenes in Hollywood history. 
It is a scene that is sure to get viewers' hearts racing. The Sharon Stone Sylvester Stallone love scene is a reminder of the power of chemistry and sensuality in film. It is also a reminder of the importance of good camera work and editing in creating a truly sensual scene. The Predator costume was one of the most challenging and innovative aspects of the film. It was designed by Stan Winston, who is considered one of the greatest special effects artists of all time. Winston and his team spent months developing and perfecting the Predator costume, which was made of over 20 pieces of latex and foam rubber. The Predator costume was so heavy and cumbersome that it took two people to help actor Kevin Peter Hall put it on and take it off. Hall also had to wear a special cooling suit underneath the costume to prevent himself from overheating. Despite the challenges, the Predator costume was a huge success. It was praised for its realism and its ability to create a truly terrifying creature. The Predator costume has since become one of the most iconic movie costumes of all time. A testament to the creativity and ingenuity of Stan Winston and his team. It is one of the most iconic movie costumes of all time, and it continues to inspire filmmakers and fans alike. Ain't gonna rock and roll no more. Yakety yak, yakety yak. Don't talk back. Marnie. Excuse me, but I was just taking a shower. Good singing. <laughs> oh, I, I baked you some cookies. Cookies? I, I guess it was a dumb idea. No, not at all. I One of the most iconic aspects of Twins is the comedic chemistry between Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito. The two actors are physically and personality-wise opposite ends of the spectrum, but they manage to create a truly magical bond on screen. Schwarzenegger and DeVito became fast friends on the set of Twins, and their friendship was evident in their performances. The two actors improvised a lot of their dialogue and scenes, and they had a lot of fun working together. The twins' double act is one of the most memorable in cinematic history. It is a testament to the comedic talents of Schwarzenegger and DeVito, and it is a major reason why the film is still so beloved today. One of the most iconic and comedic double acts in cinematic history. It is a testament to the comedic talents of both actors, and it is a major reason why the film is still so beloved today. Of course I do. Daddy? Dad? Sean. 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 Oh, son. I want to listen. That's enough. No, put him back on. I, I want to talk to him. You just did. No. You listen. But Dad, we're all a little two-faced in this day and age. <laughs> it's a survival mechanism. You know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, <laughs> you know, as a cop, you should...
Mel Gibson is known for being a perfectionist, and he was no different on the set of Ransom. He was so dedicated to his role that he refused to do reshoots, even when director Ron Howard asked him to. Gibson's refusal to do reshoots caused a lot of tension on set, and it even led to rumors that he would be fired from the film. However, Howard eventually relented and allowed Gibson to finish filming on his terms. Despite the tension, Gibson's performance in Ransom was widely praised. He was nominated for a Golden Globe Award for Best Actor, Motion Picture Drama, and he is widely considered to have given one of the best performances of his career. A testament to Mel Gibson's dedication to his craft. His refusal to do reshoots ultimately resulted in one of the best performances of his career. This... Help me! Get me out of here! My God! This man's not dead! <laughs> Last Action Hero is one of the most notorious examples of the Too Many Cooks syndrome in Hollywood. The film was directed by John McTiernan, produced by Joel Silver, and written by Shane Black. However, the film was also subjected to extensive studio interference. The studio was constantly making changes to the film, even during filming. This led to a lot of confusion and frustration on set, and it ultimately resulted in a film that was tonally inconsistent and narratively disjointed. Last Action Hero was a box office bomb, and it is widely considered to be one of the worst films of all time. A cautionary tale about the dangers of studio interference. Last Action Hero is a notorious example of the too many cooks syndrome in Hollywood, which resulted in a tonally inconsistent and narratively disjointed film. you are out there, I'll never be number one. So, we'll say goodbye, Bobby. Huh? No goodbyes. The on-set rivalry between Sylvester Stallone and Antonio Banderas is one of the most infamous behind-the-scenes stories in Hollywood history. The two actors were reportedly constantly competing with each other, and they even clashed over creative decisions such as camera angles and dialogue. The rivalry between Stallone and Banderas came to a head during the filming of a scene in which their characters are fighting. Stallone allegedly punched Banderas so hard that he knocked him out. Banderas was reportedly furious, and he threatened to quit the film. However, he was eventually convinced to stay on board after being promised a larger salary and more screen time. Despite the rivalry between Stallone and Banderas, Assassins was a box office success. Both actors were praised for their performances, and the film is still considered to be one of the best action thrillers of the 1990s. However, the on-set rivalry between Stallone and Banderas is a reminder of the dark side of Hollywood, and it is a cautionary tale about the dangers of ego and competition. One of the most infamous behind-the-scenes stories in Hollywood history. The on-set rivalry between Sylvester Stallone and Antonio Banderas is a reminder of the dark side of Hollywood, 
and it is a cautionary tale about the dangers of ego and competition. You know, Detective, a very important part of the Massachusetts economy is research and development. Senator, I think you're in a position, Senator, regarding Northmore, where you had better decide whether you're hanging on the cross or banging in the nails. Yeah. These deaths are the result. Rear end in my car. You just made a serious mistake. I'm the supposed target of a killer. So you're gonna follow me, armed, with no credentials into the city of Boston, you any mind? Fuck up the hell. Mel Gibson's meltdown on the set of Edge of Darkness is one of the most infamous behind-the-scenes stories in recent Hollywood history. Gibson was reportedly verbally abusive to cast and crew members, and he even had a physical altercation with one of the producers. Gibson's meltdown was reportedly caused by a combination of factors, including stress, personal problems, and alcohol abuse. The incident caused a lot of damage to Gibson's reputation, and it set back his career for several years. Despite the controversy, Edge of Darkness was a critical and commercial success. Mel Gibson's performance was widely praised, and the film is considered to be one of his best works in recent years. One of the most infamous behind-the-scenes stories in recent Hollywood history. Mel Gibson's meltdown on the set of Edge of Darkness is a reminder of the dark side of Hollywood, and it is a cautionary tale about the dangers of addiction and mental health issues. Let's test the remote, see if you can keep up with me. Alrighty, here we go. I'm telling you, these repets, they come back to you, you cannot tell the difference. Trust me, I had it done. Oh, shit. One of the most expensive films ever made at the time, The Sixth Day was heavily marketed for its groundbreaking CGI effects. However, when the film was released, critics were disappointed by the quality of the CGI, which many accused the studio of rushing and cutting corners on. One of the most notorious examples of the poor CGI is the scene in which Arnold Schwarzenegger's character fights his clone. The clone is supposed to look exactly like Schwarzenegger, but it is obvious that the CGI is not up to par. The clone's face looks rubbery and unnatural, and its movements are jerky and unrealistic. The poor CGI in The Sixth Day was a major embarrassment for the studio and for Schwarzenegger. It also damaged the reputation of the film and contributed to its box office failure. The CGI gate scandal is a reminder of the importance of quality control in filmmaking. It is also a reminder of the dangers of overpromising and underdelivering. I demand to know what he's charged with. Both of you are charged with the killing of Marvin Larson. You are identified at the scene of the crime. Rick, tell them. Tell them what, Marianne? About the witness relocation program. You'll have plenty of time to tell us in jail. Now put both hands behind your head. Both hands. Oh. 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 You have it, my Marianne. Let's take a look. Ah, jeez. How is it? Well, it's not bad, but it's not great. Clean it up. What's that? Mm -hmm. 
Goldie Hawn and Mel Gibson had undeniable chemistry on the set of Bird on a Wire. The two actors reportedly bonded over their shared love of acting and their playful personalities. They were often seen flirting and joking around with each other. The chemistry between Hawn and Gibson was so strong that it reportedly made some of the crew members uncomfortable. One crew member was quoted as saying, they were like two firecrackers. They were just waiting to go off. It was actually kind of explosive. The chemistry between Hawn and Gibson was also evident in the film itself. Their on-screen relationship was passionate and believable. Many critics praised the two actors for their performances, and their chemistry is one of the reasons why Bird on a Wire is considered to be one of the best romantic comedies of the 1990s. The Goldie Hawn Mel Gibson passion is a reminder that even the most experienced actors can be swept up in the moment. It is also a reminder of the importance of chemistry between actors in a film. What's this? Oh, Joe's gun. Look at this, all greasy and dirty. Let's see. There we go. This and this. Mom, what are you doing here? Mommy's got to change you. Ah! Mommy, I don't want to be changed. I've got to change you. I can change you, change you, change you. Sylvester Stallone's character, Joe Bamowski, has to wear a wig to disguise himself as his mother. Stallone found the wig to be very uncomfortable and itchy. During filming, Stallone would often take off the wig whenever he had a chance, even during takes. This made the director very angry. One day, Stallone was filming a scene in which he had to run down a street while wearing the wig. Stallone was running so fast that the wig flew off his head and landed in the street. Stallone stopped running and picked up the wig, but then he started laughing so hard that he couldn't continue filming. The Sylvester Stallone mom wig is a funny example of how even the biggest stars in Hollywood can have trouble with seemingly simple things. It is also a reminder that even the most serious movies can have their share of funny moments. Arnold Schwarzenegger and Vanessa Williams had great chemistry on the set of Eraser. The two actors reportedly bonded over their shared work ethic and their sense of humor. They were often seen laughing and joking around with each other. The chemistry between Schwarzenegger and Williams was so strong that it reportedly made some of the crew members uncomfortable. One crew member was quoted as saying, they were like two magnets. They were just drawn to each other. It was actually kind of intense. The chemistry between Schwarzenegger and Williams was also evident in the film itself. Their on-screen relationship was believable and heartwarming. Many critics praised the two actors for their performances, and their chemistry is one of the reasons why Eraser is considered to be one of the best action films of the 1990s. The Arnold Vanessa Williams chemistry is a reminder that even the biggest action stars can have romantic chemistry. It is also a reminder of the importance of chemistry between actors in a film. Get him out of here. 
Thank you. What she can't say. Oh, oh, come on, look, come on. I haven't done anything officers, wrong. Officers, officers, please. Oh, take him from here. I'm Al Sutton. Sorry. Hi, Al. You need to start my. Mel Gibson and Julia Roberts reportedly clashed on the set of Conspiracy Theory. Gibson was reportedly unhappy with Roberts' lack of work ethic and her lack of creativity. He was also reportedly uncomfortable with her laid-back personality. Roberts, for her part, was reportedly frustrated by Gibson's intensity in his controlling nature. The feud between Gibson and Roberts came to a head during the filming of a kissing scene. Gibson reportedly refused to kiss Roberts unless she agreed to wear a wig. Roberts refused to wear a wig, and the two actors reportedly argued for hours. The scene was eventually filmed, but the tension between Gibson and Roberts was palpable. The feud between Gibson and Roberts tarnished the experience of making conspiracy theory. The film's director, Richard Donner, later said that it was the most difficult movie he had ever made. Despite the feud, Conspiracy Theory was a box office success. However, the feud between Gibson and Roberts is still one of the most talked about behind-the-scenes dramas in Hollywood history. The Gibson-Roberts feud is a reminder that even the biggest stars in Hollywood can clash. It is also a reminder of the importance of professionalism and respect on the set of a film. Five Ford Mustang V8, 289 with 225 horsepower. It's last time you turned this thing over. She's been dead for 15 years. A couple of guys tried to get her going and couldn't. Well, I'm a body man myself. Mind if I give it a try? It's a dead issue, Frank. <laughs> Sylvester Stallone is known for his commitment to physical fitness, and he didn't let up on his workout routine even while filming Lockup. Stallone reportedly set up a gym in his prison cell and worked out every day for several hours. Stallone's workout routine was so intense that it reportedly impressed the real-life inmates who were working as extras on the film. One inmate was quoted as saying, I've seen a lot of guys come in here and try to work out, but none of them have ever trained as hard as Stallone. Stallone's dedication to his workout routine paid off. He was in peak physical condition for lockup, and his muscular physique was one of the highlights of the film. The Stallone prison workout is a reminder of Stallone's commitment to his craft and his dedication to physical fitness. It is also a reminder of the importance of physical fitness for actors who want to be believable in action roles. killed me. Too bad you missed. Oh god, I just looked at his penis. Oh, I hope he didn't see me. Oh shit, I just looked at it again. Stop it. <laughs> Are you all right? I'm fine. I just got something in my eye. <laughs> All right, um, so great. So uh, tomorrow will be, that'll be great. I'll see you then. Uh, good work.
Mel Gibson and Helen Hunt reportedly fell in love on the set of What Women Want. The two actors had a strong connection, and they were reportedly inseparable during filming. The Gibson-Hunt romance was reportedly kept secret from the public, but it was eventually revealed by a crew member who sold the story to a tabloid magazine. The revelation of the romance caused a scandal, as Gibson was still married at the time. Despite the scandal, Gibson and Hunt's romance continued for several years. The two actors eventually broke up, but they remained friends. The Gibson-Hunt kiss is a reminder of the passion and intensity that can sometimes develop between actors on set. It is also a reminder of the importance of discretion in the world of Hollywood. You feel good? Yeah, why? I mean, you feel strong? Why? Come with me. Where are we going? You'll see. There we go. Excuse me. Yeah. yeah. Did any of you boys have... Sylvester Stallone and producer Erwin Winkler clashed on the set of Over the Top. Stallone was reportedly unhappy with Winkler's control over the film, and he felt that he was not given enough creative freedom. Winkler, for his part, was frustrated by Stallone's arrogance and his demands for more money. The feud between Stallone and Winkler came to a head during the filming of a scene in which Stallone's character is competing in an arm wrestling tournament. Stallone reportedly insisted on doing his own stunts, even though he was already injured. Winkler was reportedly furious, and he threatened to shut down the production. Despite the feud between Stallone and Winkler, Over the Top was a box office success. Stallone's performance was widely praised, and the film is still considered to be one of his best works. However, the feud between the two men tarnished the experience of making the film. The Stallone-Winkler feud is a reminder of the importance of collaboration on film sets. It is also a reminder of the dangers of letting ego and creative differences get in the way of making a good movie. Is that a newsie? Hey, you know, that would make a great TV commercial, wouldn't it? Excuse me, is that a newsie? Why, well, yes, it is. I can't hey, believe this guy. Self-defense is no laughing says, matter. Says no That's why when it comes to, to number one, I pack a newsie, oh, except no substitutes. Show him your amulet, Gene. Look at that. Yeah, what's in there? To be honest... Hey, Gene. We're not here right now. Yeah, I saw Nixon on TV. Yeah, so, if we're not actually here, then, of course, this didn't happen. Well, maybe it didn't happen for you, and maybe it didn't happen for Nixon, but... Mel Gibson and Robert Downey Jr. reportedly clashed on the set of Air America. Gibson was reportedly unhappy with Downey Jr.'s lack of professionalism and his tendency to show up late to filming. Downey Jr., for his part, was reportedly frustrated by Gibson's controlling nature and his demands for perfection. The feud between Gibson and Downey Jr. came to a head during the filming of a scene in which their characters are fighting. Gibson reportedly punched Downey Jr. in the face, knocking him to the ground. The two actors were reportedly separated by crew members, and the filming of the scene was halted. Despite the feud between Gibson and Downey Jr., Air America was a box office success. The film was praised for its action sequences and its two lead performances. However, the feud between Gibson and Downey Jr. tarnished the experience of making the film, and it is reportedly one of the reasons why they have never worked together again. The Gibson Downey Jr. feud is a reminder that even the biggest stars in Hollywood can clash. It is also a reminder of the importance of professionalism and respect on the set of a film. Well, what do you think? 
I think with your IQ, you're unarmed and still very dangerous. Okay, Sherlock Holmes, if you're so goddamn smart, you tell me who set us up. I don't know yet. Yeah, you don't know shit. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Relax. Soap. <laughs> oh, shit, it's Conan. What? It's Conan. We're gonna get FUBAR now. What the hell's FUBAR? You'll see. Real badass cops. <laughs> you don't look so tough now, do you? Do you, you fuck? It must mean you. On the streets, this pig and his cop. Sylvester Stallone and Kurt Russell are two of the biggest action stars of all time. But their feud on the set of the 1989 film Tango and Cash is one of the most infamous behind-the-scenes stories in Hollywood history. One specific example of the Stallone-Russell feud occurred when Stallone insisted on performing a dangerous stunt himself, even though the director had hired a professional stuntman. Russell reportedly tried to convince Stallone to let the stuntman do the stunt, but Stallone refused. This led to a heated argument between the two actors. Another example of the feud occurred when Stallone reportedly changed the script without Russell's approval. Russell was reportedly upset about the changes, and he refused to shoot a particular scene until Stallone agreed to put the original scene back in the script. This led to a production delay, and it further strained the relationship between Stallone and Russell. Despite the feud between Stallone and Russell, Tango and Cash was a box office success and has since become a cult classic. The movie is known for its over-the-top action sequences, its cheesy dialogue, and its homoerotic subtext. It is also known for the feud between Sylvester Stallone and Kurt Russell, which is one of the most juicy behind-the-scenes stories in Hollywood history. No, I wasn't. He was. Then what were you doing? I was trying to teach him how to sell it. You're serious? Well, that's what he came down to. And that fellow, Andy Leonard, he's smart enough to be a lawyer, but he's way too dumb to be a crook. You had to be getting some. You son of a bitch! How could you do this? Friendship is the only choice in life you can make that's yours! You can't choose your family! God damn it, I've had to face that! And no man should be judged for whatever direction his dick goes! That's like... Uh... Mel Gibson and Michelle Pfeiffer are two of Hollywood's most iconic actors, but their time together on the set of Tequila Sunrise was anything but harmonious. One of the main sources of tension between Gibson and Pfeiffer was their different acting styles. Another source of tension was Gibson's alleged unprofessional behavior. He was reportedly often late to set, and he would sometimes disappear for hours on end. He was also reportedly difficult to work with, and he would often get into arguments with the director and other crew members. The feud reportedly came to a head on the final day of filming, when Gibson was supposed to shoot a scene in which he had to kiss Pfeiffer on the cheek. However, Gibson reportedly kissed Pfeiffer on the lips instead. This led to a heated argument between the two actors, and it further fueled the rumors of a feud between them. Despite the problems on set, Tequila Sunrise has become a cult classic in recent years. Fans of the film appreciate its stylish visuals, its suspenseful plot, and its strong performances from Gibson and Pfeiffer. But the film's most enduring legacy may be the juicy tales of the feud between Gibson and Pfeiffer. And there you have it, fellow movie detectives. We've dived deep into the hidden world of Hollywood, unlocking secrets and sharing untold stories. I hope you enjoyed this cinematic journey. Before you go, I want to express my sincere gratitude to each and every one of you for joining me on this adventure. Your enthusiasm for the magic of movies is what makes this community so special. Now, here's where you come in, let's keep the conversation going. In the comments below, share your favorite behind the scenes moment or let me know which movie surprised you the most. 
And hey, if there's a film you'd love to see featured in the next episode, drop that suggestion too. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, subscribe for more cinematic journeys, and ring that notification bell so you never miss a revealing episode. Until next time, stay curious, stay entertained, and remember, the magic of the movies is always just a click away. Thank you, and I'll see you in the comments.